Hello everyone, my name is Rafael Sanchez and I want to show you how to get started using the state machine library in Twin Activate. We're going to put together a very simple example of an elevator and we're going to control its behavior using finite state machines. Previously I put together two super block files, a user's block for the inputs and an elevator block for the plant. Let's look at this one first. It's very simple, just takes as an input the control signal, there's an integrator and a saturation block and a rounding block. This is going to represent the floor in which we're currently in. Let me show it to you. We're going to feed it a sine wave with a low frequency just to see how the elevator traverses and let's analyze with a scope. And look at how the elevator goes up and then down again. Now let's have a look at the other super block I've created. Let me delete the input and disconnect the scope. This is the user's block which generates some random inputs from users. It's very simple as well. We just generate a random number every 12 seconds between zero and 10 representing the elevator's floors and we round the number with the next block. That's it. Let's have a look at the results from the sample run. Floor zero, then floor nine, six, three, eight, and so on. So it's straightforward as well. Let's get properly into the state machine library. Let's go to palettes, state machine library, and let's drag a top state machine diagram. This is going to be the uppermost level every time we start building a finite state machine with this library. Now, we have to activate it externally, so let's go to activation operations and use a sample clock to activate it every um, X amount of time. We're going to activate it 10 times every second. Now let's go into this block. Let's click enter mask super block because by default they are masked. And we can see here the top mouse level inside the state machine. We have two state machines definition. Let's delete one because we just need one. And these are the inputs to the state machine. All the data it needs to gather for its behavior and all the outputs. Let's rename them accordingly. We need the level which we desire. Let's label this command level. That is the level that the user wants to go to. And the other one is going to be the actual level. Let's label it just level. Okay, let me label the ports accordingly. Level and command level. And afterwards, let's do the same with the outputs. We just need one output. And let's name the other one control signal. This is the signal we're going to send to the plant. The red block you see there is just a block that splits activation, the initial activation and the rest of the activations the block receives. Now we're good to go to the next level, the definition of the states. Now this is where we declare all the possible states for our machine. You see two inputs, the initial input that will trigger the initial state and the rest, all normal activations. Let's set the maximum number of states to three in this case. Let's move this to the right and I'm going to copy this state for later when I want to declare the moving up and moving down states. Now let's go inside this one. This is going to be the idle state. Let's click on enter mask super block and there you have it. This is where we're going to define the behavior of the elevator when idle. So first let's set the value of control signal to whatever value we want using a constant block during the initialization of this block. You notice there's two yellow blocks, one is for initialization and another one for each activation. Apart from setting that signal, let's get all the relevant signals, which in this case are level and command level. That is the level which we're currently in and the level in which the user wants to be in, right? Let's do some logic to trigger the exit of the idle state to any other state, moving up or moving down. So we're going to do a very simple comparison that will enable transition to each of those states. We're going to be checking each time this state is activated, the level and the current level, and if they are not the same, two things can happen. Let's connect both of the signals to the activation input. Let's align everything so it's looking nice. And these blocks are going to evaluate whether one signal is greater than the other. Notice how the, sig the sign is different for each of those. Let's align those vertically. Let's connect the blocks. So there's going to be two comparisons happening and there's going to be 
two logic blocks, the red blocks there. Let's connect each of those to the comparisons and if the first signal that is the level is less than the command level we're going to go up and the other way around if the level is greater than the command level we're going to go down and that's it for this state. Now let's go back up to the states diagram and now it's time for us to add the other states moving up and moving down. Let me make this block a little bit bigger so the, out, the text from each output is seen. Let me align it. And instead of taking the other state that I had copied, let me copy this one again, because this one has already some things that are going to be useful for us. There you go. Let me delete the previous one. And let's set the state number of this one to two, and the name is going to be moving up. And now let's click on this state, enter my super block. And here we can edit everything. Oh. I noticed I left control signal as 1 for the other state when idle, that's a mistake, this should be 0, there we go, now we're ready. Let's exit this state and go back to the moving up state, enter mask super block and there we go. This one should be set to 1 in this case. This time there is just one possible transition to go out of this state, so I'm going to delete one of them and I'm going to relabel this one as stop. The control signal is going to be set as 1, that is the elevator is going to be going up and then we're going to use a single logical block this time that is going to measure whenever the level and the desired level have reached the same value we are going to stop. And there we have it. It's a really simple state. Just during the initialization we set the control signal and then we monitor for whenever the level which is the same value as the desired level. Now let's copy moving up state because this is going to be identical almost to moving down. Let's set state number to three and moving down as a name. Click OK. Now I see the event union, the small red bar there is going to require three inputs, initialization and transition from each of those states. And let's go into the mask super block. The only difference here is that we're going to set the signal from minus one. That is, the elevator is going to be going down, but the logic is the same. Now let's connect everything. Very simple. Let's flip around the states for moving up and down. I'm going to select them, Control shift and H to align along the horizontal axis. Everything looking nice. Let's make the connections. And there you have it. And with this, our state machine is ready for us to test it. Let's go up into the main diagram and then we can connect everything. Let's connect this controller to the elevator plant and the user input to the controller. Let's add a scope to look at the output and let's connect the level for the required feedback. Let's run this and look at the results. They seem to be working nicely, but let me change the scope to have two inputs. That way we can compare the input to the actual behavior of the elevator. Let's check it out. And that's it. Everything's working as expected. Hope this is a useful example for you to get started using this state machine library in your own projects. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.